Hey y'all, this is Whitney and welcome back to an episode of Spastic Chatter. It's been a minute and uh, since I've uploaded my last episode, but uh we're starting back with 2022 and I have a I have a great guest to start off my to start off the year. And if you're just now watching this, uh spastic or if you're new to Spastic Chatter. Spazzy Chatter is a platform meant to feature those in the cerebral palsy community, and I get together with individuals with CP like myself to have an uncensored chat about what it's like living with this type of disability. And I have a Lucas with me today. He's a stand up comedian. So I'm feeling you get ready to laugh during this episode. Um, and I will let Lucas introduce himself, and uh, yeah, and then we'll start the conversation. So take it away, Lucas. Yeah, um, thanks for having me, Whitney. And I'm a, I'm a, like Whitney said, I'm a stand-up comedian. I've been working at comedy for uh, the last seven years. Um, I have toured all over the country, performed all over the country. Um, I perform in Indianapolis on a regular basis. I am I am trying to make it in this industry. By make it, I mean make a living in this industry, which is a challenge to everyone else, let alone if you're disabled or not, you know. Um, but yeah, like I've been going at it for seven years and, um, I'm about to record a special in the spring, um, called Public Inconvenience and it's my, it's my hour that's basically about disability and about how you know, people perceive um, disability. And it's really, you know, it's really trying to, you know, not make fun of disability, but make fun of how people perceive it and treat people with disabilities and kind of mock a the stupidity and naivety of able-bodied people. Um, that's awesome. Because I, I don't think that happens enough. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. I, I that would be that would be right up my right up my alley. Um I kind of I kind of want to take it back. I get to like when you start we're gonna start the question, but I kinda wanna take it back to the beginning. Like you said that you were in comedy for seven years. Are you been in comedy for seven years? What kind of got you started on the path of being a comedian? So, like, out of college, I I graduated with a um, degree in political science, and I couldn't find a job out of college, and because I'm kind of lefty in Indiana, so, like, I blame that on, you know, like, I worked for some Democrats that were just white Republican, you know, Republican, diet Republicans. So I kind of wanted, you know, to work for something I feel passionate about and couldn't find it. And then I started doing open mics and was like, fuck, I'm good at this. Yeah. I'm funny. I sucked back then, but I thought I was good. Um, I'm not <laughs> enough to keep going at least and um i can i got addicted to it man. like i love i love being the center of attention i love you know telling people i think it's a I, it's really the most narcissist thing you can do is like go up and in front of a group of like 300 people and be like no shut up listen to me like and 
that's why I love it. Because I can be like, no, shut up. Like, everybody, stop. Listen. Yeah. I'm, um, kind of the same, I'm kind of the same way. Yeah. And, and you know, you kind of use the wheelchair and the disability to your advantage because, you know, people are willing to give you attention if you stick out more, you know, when you're crippled. Yeah, exactly. I always say, I, I always say like, I wouldn't, I don't want to, I don't want to blend in. I want to, I want to stick out. Like, um, yeah. but I, I wanted to, I wanted to, I have, I have a story that I want to, that I want to tell that I, that I, that I think, I think you would, you would, uh, relate to it and find it funny. So, in, in in college, like I, I I'm very I'm very sarcastic. People um people have told me I I need to go I need to go into I need to go into comedy because it's the same reasons that you're doing it. But in college, I was at I was at a, I was at a bar and like of course I'm I was a little bit intoxicated and this uh, gentleman came up to me and like you couldn't see my wheelchair. Cause like the bar was covering it, and I guess he was so he was so drunk that he couldn't like see my facial. But, like you can you can obviously tell that I have a disability, like when I talk. But we we no we, way. I know. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, and I had him go. He asked me what I did for work, and I had him going that I was. That I was a stand up that I was a stand up comedian and we had this whole conversation for like 30 minutes. And then I and then I and then I backed up and he saw the wheelchair and he was he was like, You were bullshitting me the whole the whole time. Well there you could do it then. You should do comedy. I um, I should try. But um yeah. uh, do you I kinda wanna get in like uh, into like a do you get like where people like find you like inspirational and then they like and then like you like get on stage and like you're all and then I was yeah. obviously I've only spoke I've only spoke to you a couple times but um I don't think you're all about the inspirational porn and all that inspo porn no. and all that stuff. No, I I kind of hate it. I hate that shit. Like, yeah, I think it's I think it's very damaging to um, disabled people um, to be viewed as that. Um, and the, because it's bullshit. Like, we're not we're not the worst. Like, people have this idea that we're the worst. Like. We're yeah. as bad as it gets. Like you can't have it worse than us. So we like our only our only responsibility to society is inspire other people to be better because that's all we can fucking do. And I think that's very damaging. Um and destructive because that's not all we can do. But that being said, I kind of use that as humor in my stand-up. I, I, I use that inspirational shit kind of as a backdrop to my, you know, sarcasm. And I, I love, you know, I love being dark. I am a very dark, I have very dark humor. Um, I love talking about death and politics, and I love saying crippled, and I say retard every now and then in my stand-up. Like, I, and I think I've earned that right because I've been called that in life. So, like, and I think that kind of, when I get into that shit, people are at first like, look at him, he's being so heroic. 
And then yeah. I get into the death and retard shit, and they're like, uh, they are confused. Like, they, because it doesn't fit, like, it doesn't fit the. Yeah. The, the, you know, it doesn't fit the piece of what disability should be. And I, I think a lot of what disability, the narrative around disability is dictated by able bodied people mm -hmm. and not by us because we don't have say. So I don't know. I, I think a lot of. I think we have a responsibility to be, you know, non-inspiring and be degenerates and like yeah, like not not give a fuck. Exactly, like we're just but we're just we're just people like living our life. We're not we're not here to be to, to be inspirational. I I've had people I've had uh, people come in to, come into my home and like like just randomly show up and like want to. Like the the like make comments like I don't know how you I don't know how you live like this like I go pointing at my own chair and stuff and I'm like I don't know how you live like like why are you so like why are you so ignorant what do you what do you what do you mean like yeah like yeah like like I mean I I deal with shit every day I mean yeah that. Like coming into your home and saying that shit, that's bullshit. Yeah. Like this no, is your place. Like uh I I me and my fiance are both in wheelchairs. So this kind of goes into like what we're talking about. I will be I will be I'll be walking my dog. And uh, like this is a this has really happened like twice. Random people will pull over on the side of the road and like ask me if I need groceries. <laughs> and, and like cause I see cause I see dead. Cause they see Devin on the front porch and like me walking my dog, so they automatically assume that two people in wheelchairs like, oh, let me help, let me help them. Like I'm doing a good deed for the day by buying them groceries, and I'm just like, hell yeah, you can buy you can you can buy me groceries. Like, like I want I want this I want this so I want some beer. Like I want I want all I want all this stuff. Like. And then yeah. you're like, whoa, 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 whoa! I wasn't expecting you to say that. Or like, or like on on another on other days, I'm like, no, I have a job. Like I have a job. Like I'm, like I I'm perfectly. Yeah. yeah, we 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 gotta use that shit. We gotta take advantage of their stupidity, um, like, and not not care about the consequences like i i like i have jokes about getting free drinks all the time like i'm i might as well be you know a hot a hot college girl i get so yeah. many freaking free drinks you know that's funny um oh uh, and like me me and my partner deal with it because they use a cane and we deal with the stupid shit people say to us every fucking every fucking day. Yeah. And like the other day they were called a hero for dating me. Like a hero. I'm That's like, totally... like I... what the fuck am I a hero? <laughs> like I I'm a good looking guy. And they're a hero. But... <laughs> Uh, uh, prior to um, like a past relationship, I was dating an able bodied person, and I had I had somebody uh, we had somebody follow us through Walmart to give him a hug and pray for us. For I know why for being why are, for being. Why are they the heroes? We're dealing with the bullshit. Like what they? Yeah, they're not the heroes. What? I want it one time. I want to be like, well, well, Riley beats me, so, <laughs> so, why do you think I'm in this wheelchair? <laughs> so, kind of going. They down. pushed me down the stairs. Are they a hero now? <laughs> right. Kind of going back to your uh, to your like your, your comedy. What is your favorite like 
like topic for like your your joke like your jokes do you have a do you have a favorite like um, like like thing to um it just depends it depends what i'm going through in life um right now you know it's all a lot about relationships and living like living situations and growing growing um so my older stuff is more about my folks and like how my folks treated me growing up and now that i'm getting older and becoming you know 30s it's more about living situation and relationships it really like my comedy really follows the same trajectory as an able excuse me as an able bodied as an able bodied comedian like I talk about the same shit. It's just through the lens of, you know, a person in a wheelchair. Like, I always say my my disability is a character yeah. and not, like, my disability is a character in my comedy and not the main subject. Like, it just okay. yeah. is part of it. Like, um... Because I have to talk about it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I have an, I have a, I have a question because I, because I, uh, I deal with this. Has, has a, has there been like any negative feedback, especially from like the disability community about like about like your choice of like language and things like that? Like, have you ever experienced any kind of negative feedback? From your oh yeah, oh yeah. I I don't. There's certain groups that don't like will invite me, and then I'm like, well, look at my stuff, like because I'm you know I do my material wherever I'm at. So if I'm you know at you know a special needs conference, I'm gonna do the same material that yeah. I would at. That I would at, um, you know, a dive bar. So, um, there there are people uncomfortable with some of the words, like the, you know, the R word, like retard and crippled, and I understand that. You know, I I can sympathize with that, but I'm, you know, I'm I've made a choice to use yeah. those words and I'm not I think they're useful um, I think it's it's important to reclaim words yeah. um, okay. I, as a community yeah I get I get like I can't tell you how much shit I get about using the word spastic and spastic chatter and I'm like I'm I'm I, I the reason I call it spastic chatter is because I'm calling myself out before you have the chance to. Like, I'm like obviously, obviously I'm spastic, and when I talk, I look, I look funny. Like I've, like there's no, there's no, uh, there's no hiding it. Like I've gotten comments yeah. about my voice, about my voice, and like how I look when I talk, and about, and like so I, I created spastic chatter. Like I mentioned spastic in the in the in the name because I'm calling myself out before you can do it. Like I'm making it a I'm making it an okay term. Like like you said, I'm reclaiming the word. Like yeah, like yeah, exactly. Like I have people like I call myself crippled. I have people say, "Oh, honey, you're not crippled." And I'm like, "Motherfucker, I can't get myself out of bed." <laughs> Like, I can't get myself out of bed. I can't wipe my own ass. I'm fucking crippled. Yeah. If there, like, if there was anybody that's crippled, it's me. Like, yeah. so, and I'm not, you know, 
Uh, George Carlin has a quote that I love where he's talking about the word crippled. He says, if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. So, like, the Bible and, you know, the old interpretations, they called people crippled, like, cripples. Yeah. And he's like, if Jesus called them cripples, we can call them. Like, and I, I think... I think words like spastic and crippled are so much more liberating. Yes. And so much more direct. Like, I feel, when I use crippled, I feel like that's the most descriptive way to describe me. Like, the most literal way to describe what I'm going through. Yeah. And, like, me personally, I don't like disabled because disabled literally has a negative connotation, this. And it's literally negative. And crippled, I feel like, is more empowering and more, um, yeah, more liberating. And it's self-aware, too. It's, when you use spastic, you're being self-aware, yeah. you know? You're not, you're not, you're not hiding. And a lot of, a lot of able and people want us to hide from our disability because I think they're scared of becoming disabled themselves. I think, I think in a lot of ways, what we embody is their biggest fear. Yeah. I never looked which, at that. which like, is becoming disabled or crippled, you know? And yeah. I think that's why they want us to hide from it because they don't want to deal with it themselves. Because at the end of the day, we're all going to be crippled. Like, we're yeah. not going to, you know, on our deathbed, be jumping up and down. Yeah. You know. It makes, it, may, it makes, uh, it kind of makes society on disability in a way, kind of makes, society uncomfortable so they kind of want to like yeah like, brush it aside yeah that that's why we live where we live i mean i live in an old person home like why the fuck do i live in an old person you know that that doesn't make sense like that's why we're you know we're ghettos that we're like put in ghettos and like we're uh just ostracized so yeah, I don't know. I I I could talk about this shit all day. I yeah, get, I feel like, a, I, like a, a I get, I I get on my soapbox and I just able-bodied people I love because I cannot function without them, but they just annoy the fuck out of me every single day in my life. Yeah, I totally get it. Um, so what's what's what what's like your one of your future goals in your in your comedy? career that you haven't met yet so my goal my goal is to headline more my my biggest goal is to make make a living off this uh you know hustle and by making a living i mean you know you know enough to buy a house enough to support me um you know, and tour, just get booked as much as possible. Um, and, um, yeah, make a living and become famous. And so, one of yeah. the one of the last questions I always ask my guests um, of every episode is if they have any advice for those watching that might be in a similar situation so if there's anybody that wants to be um that wants to like start their career as a comedian or like just like gain confidence or anything like that do you have any advice for um for anyone that's watching yeah for stand-ups um just just do it i mean i mean that sounds trite but um just go up 
and think of it five minutes at a time. Um, think of think of your building jokes five minutes at a time. So, um, you know, your first five minutes are the hardest because you don't know what the hell you're doing. Um, and just keep at it. Keep doing it. And for for crippled stand-ups, I would just um, suggest find your voice and find something unique about, you know, your, you know, your perception on yourself and your disability. And um, just don't get discouraged by people trying to pigeonhole you and put you in a box. Awesome. Just try to break free as much as possible awesome that's great advice so lucas where can people follow you on social media all right thank you bros yeah l-u-c-a-s-w-a-t-e-r-f-i-l-l -L. that's instagram lucas underscore waterfill on twitter lucas waterfill on facebook and my website is lucaswaterfill.com so it's pretty simple. Awesome. I will put the, all of that in the description below so people can check you out. Um, Lucas, thank you for being a, for agreeing to be on episode of Spastic Chatter. I really enjoyed talking with you. And if you're watching this and you want to be on the episode, feel free to reach out wherever, you, wherever this is posted. And I'd love to have anyone and everyone. So, um, Thank you, Whitney. This was so much fun. Awesome. Well, check back. I would say check back next week, but I don't know when there's going to be another episode posted. So just check back regular, regularly and uh, for another episode. And I will talk to everyone later. Bye.